So I would like to show you uh, some practical example of implementing uh, this Drew pattern in Ruby. So let's um, let's open Vim and let's uh, assume that we have a product class and that class will have a name and price. Uh, let's write um, initialize method for it. So we're just gonna assign uh, those values. Also, let's assume that we have a class that represents tax. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that we have a class, and that class uh, has a price. Just price. Just price. Let's assign it, and let's add some helper helper method to it uh, that will just present the name of that task data uh, tax let's assume tax and now let's assume that we have an order and an order uh, an order will have an, some some internal representation of the elements that uh, that's that are a part of it um great so now we have some foundation and let's uh now let's build a visitor pattern and, and let's answer a question actually what for uh of what for we need it uh so visitor pattern basically is about if you want to add some new functionality for the elements of a a structure but you don't want to modify um, class definition of uh, those elements each time you want to add something um, and to show it with an example um, I will add um, a module uh, that represents an interface and it has only one uh, only one uh, method um, so interface for accepting visitor right yep and um, yep that means that uh, given class accept uh, accept a visitor um, and it we will have a first simple implementation so okay uh, so now all of this class will include uh, that uh, interface product and uh, tax And we don't want, we don't need to implement uh, methods of accepting um, for each of the uh, class. The only element, uh, the only class that uh, actually needs to implement this is an order. So we want to do, uh, we want to do uh, something like this for each of the elements we want to run accept on each of the elements yep okay great actually maybe let's add um, new method um, that will add something to that order yep something simple like this okay great um, so now let's build visitor actually 
uh, first we're gonna define some abstract kind of uh, class for a visitor and it will have um, it will have uh, yeah, only one uh, method that will need to be implemented in a concrete uh, classes something like this and now let's define a concrete class so let's say that you want to build a we want to build a um, printer that will just print our um, order so basically elements of the order um, that printer will inherit from a um, visitor um, and uh, we need to define that visit uh, visit matter method so it will run for each of the elements so for each of the elements we want to uh, print um, we want to print a, a name let's say the element and it's um, and it's price something very uh, very simple so as you can see if we um, want to define a different kind of a visitor we don't need to uh, add anything to the elements of the order so to text and uh, product we just need to define the logic responsible for it in a separate uh, class uh, great so let's try some uh, example let's assume that we have a product name like laptop price 1000 and tax that has only a price of 10 then we have an order and that order will have um, price, uh, sorry, product, and um, also tax. And now, if we want to run that printer uh, functionality um, over order, what only thing we need to do is uh, sorry, uh, is to run uh, accept method with a new printer. This is the only, only thing we need to uh, do. Uh, yep. um, let's try. Uh, yep. Sorry, there is. Um, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Live coding, right? Um, yeah, okay. And let's run it again. Still some issue. Yeah, okay. So as you can see, we have a printer running on uh, our order. So basically, uh, if you want to add some new functionality that will do something over elements of the order, we need to define it in a separate uh, class and there is no need to modify a product or uh, tax class. Thanks.